Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 3 here on Heflet TV 2. Radiance this is going to be another best of two series, but this time it's going to be European Love Story versus Bananas and Pajamas. Uh, well, European Love Story previously played just a couple of hour ago, um, hours ago, um, excuse me, and ended up going one for one in the series. Yeah, they played decently well, um, and they pulled out some very interesting picks, especially in those last picks. Um, I believe first game they ended up winning the game off the back of a Phantom Lancer that, I don't know, got an early barracks and after that it was pretty much smooth sailing for the PL. So maybe we'll see something fun or anti-fun coming out from European Love Story. Bananas and Pajamas on the other side. Um, I don't know, I've seen them play once or twice, but usually those games were pretty Dying vanilla, at least as far as picks are concerned. And these bands are not any different, with the exception of the Lycanthrope being let through. And I think European Love Story are just going to snag that one up and potentially even get a Shadow Shaman on top of that and just call it a day. Brewmaster is decent up against the Lycanthrope. He can give him that mischance, but still not enough to really stop the Lycan. And there you go, Lycanthrope, Shadow Shaman, easy first two picks for European Love Story. Um... Yeah, I think that's really a fatal mistake. When you are banning out, I'd much rather play against a Tidehunter or against a Doom than a Lycanthrope Shadow Shaman, to be honest. Yeah, it's just an opener that's a little bit too strong, and if they pick something else to uh, push with that, as well as a really strong teamfight initiator... I don't know, European Love Story are looking good to take this game fairly easily. Faceless Void is going to be passed up throughout this uh, picking stage, as Bananas and Pajamas will pick themselves up a Skyrath Mage, as their second pickup to go along with that Brewmaster. Scarth Mage does better against Brewmaster than they have synergy together. I don't know, both of them offer a decent amount of teamfight damage with the uh, Brewmaster split as well as with the Scarth Mage ulti. Um, but neither of them very good at controlling up a Lycanthrope. They do have the Silence on the Scarth Mage as well as the Cyclone to delay things. Um, but usually, with just the Skyrath Mage and the Brewmaster, you shouldn't be able to burst down the Lycanthrope that easily. And even if this Lycanthrope has a poor start to begin with, you're still going to have the same Lycan late game that if you lose a fight to, he's going to shred your towers to absolute shreds. Uh, bits. I don't know. That was... It started out okay, but it kind of ended up in a very poor situation. But in the end, yeah, European Love Story getting quite possibly the most sought after first two picks in this patch on the dire side, Lycan and Shadow Shaman. They can Roshan incredibly early. Um, I don't know, I doubt they'll be going for any sort of level 1 Roshan, but uh, could be a possibility, but I don't think they'll need to. At about 10 minutes in, or sub-10 minutes, they should be able to take the first Roshan fairly easily. But as a Pajamas, um, kind of after the fact, we'll ban out a lot of pushing-oriented heroes in the form of the Pugnant as well as Death Prophet, leaving pretty much European love story the cream of the crop as far as it comes to their offlaners and other heroes. So they'll go ahead and pick up a Centaur Warner for themselves. And he does fill that role of the... Teamfight Initiator that's going to help a lot uh, with helping them get the pickoffs to convert into the tower pushes. Uh, also, a lot of haste coming out from these two, and currently we only have... Um, yeah, I don't know, the haste is pretty good so far up against Bananas and Pajamas lineup. Brewmaster, if he combos it correctly, he can cyclone them up in the air, then purge them down, then through the boulder. But if you're running away from that boulder, its travel time is incredibly slow. Uh, so, usually you can make a decent amount of distance between yourself and the enemy team before it lands. Um... Also, Skyrath Mage is not going to be locking you down that much as long as you have the Centaur somewhere on, on the map. And, yeah, I don't know, it's it's scary to go up against, to say the least. And I think going with conventional picks really isn't going to work for Bananas and Pajamas. Because if they play their normal game and just try for trades up against European Love Story, they're going to be in a bit of trouble. I think they need to play incredibly aggressive and try to shut down European Love Story before they can actually get off of the ground and Lycan gets up his core items. Uh, in particular, like, Treads, Vladimir's Necrobook is when Lycan really becomes the pushing threat. Well, let me just uh, double check that everything is working properly on the stream side, and it looks like we have Dota, so... We'll be pretty good as the Invoker picks up for European Love Story. Uh, with Centaur Warner as well as Shadow Shaman, I'm hoping that that is an Exhort Invoker. In addition to that, if he builds a Necro Book with those Forge Spirits, the Howl damage is going to be ridiculous with the little bit of Zoo that European Love Story creating with these pickups. Uh, yeah, I think Invoker is a great uh, pickup for them. Allows them to get very easy global pickoffs with a Hoof Stomp into Sunstrike double-edged combo. The Invoker and Centaur Warner can pretty much kill anybody on the map globally. Um, 
So that's pretty much going to be the sum of it. I'm really liking European Love Stories lineup as it stands, and I think they have the upper hand. Um, unless Bananas and Pajamas pull something completely out of left field and just outplay European Love Story. Um, yeah, European Love Story probably need one more support. Um, I'm not sure what they'd personally like to get, uh, but there are plenty of supports still left in the pool. If they want to snag one up, they could get themselves an Earthshaker, which has been left untouched, which would be nice, or uh, as they do have first pick, maybe they pick up the Sand King for themselves, as that could be a farming Venomancer with Skyrath Mage, and then they want to get the Sand King for the Darkseer Sand King combo, but that looks a little bit unlikely. Currently, Darkseer is kind of feeling a bit lackluster in the Bananas and Pajamas lineup. They don't have great things to combo with that vacuum, uh, but as it stands, just the uh, vacuum into wall is decent, and then if they get a Venomous Gale on top of that, it can be pretty disastrous. Scarth Mage doesn't combo well with it because his ultimate Die. splits the damage between all of the units, so actually catching those multiple units is to your detriment. European Love Story is going to go ahead and pick up the Earthshaker, however, kind of as expected. Just gives them another way to jump in, get those team fight wins in order to uh, get ahead of Bananas and Pajamas early. Also, a decent defensive support to sit behind the Lycanthrope while the Shadow Shaman runs the polls, or vice versa. Um... Yeah, and with Earthshaker, Shadow Shaman, they definitely can roam and get some kills to help out the other lanes. Oh, presumably the Invoker up against the Brewmaster. Brewmaster can be annoying to lane against, but Invoker should still do fine in that matchup, and I would say has a little bit of an edge, even though uh, with Drunken Haze, Brewmaster can be very annoying for the Invoker to deal with at early levels. Reserve time. So, Bananas and Pajamas, let's see what this fifth pickup for them is going to be. I think European Love Story are in their comfort zone, and just kind of have the cream of the crop, like everything that you could want in a lineup. They have a little bit of push, they have great pickoff, they have good team fight. Um, yeah, late game is kind of lackluster, but who needs late game when you can mow down the towers? And up against Bananas and Pajamas lineup, their late game actually isn't that bad. Like an Invoker like and throw up late game is going to carry through a Brewmaster and... Um, Darks here any day, but now with the Luna on the Bananas and Pajamas, they're going to shore up a little bit more late game, but this Luna just doesn't feel either greedy enough or aggressive enough, even if they're able to um, weather the storm that is going to be the Lycanthrope pushes early on, the split push. Uh, coming out later is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I'm not sure Luna is going to be up to the task unless she gets absolutely stacked. Okay, there we go. My HUD is all fixed now. But without any further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce our teams on the side of the Radiant. We are all going to have the Bananas in Pajamas with Farm With Me playing on the Luna. Shiva going to be playing on the Venomancer, presumably going to be a support. X and Grey going to be playing on the Skyrath Mage. Our Darks here going to be handled by um, PFF colon D, and then in mid, that will leave Roy, mother-loving Mustang, on the Brewmaster, and towards the dire side, we are going to have European Love Story, the team that I would say is favored coming out of the draft, but they will have Yunus playing on their Lycanthrope Ball, playing on the Shadow Shaman, their Earthshake will be handled by, um, Silvos, and that will leave their mid Invoker played by Zella, as well as their Centaur Warner played by Triple C, Triple A, um, so for now, that's going to be about it. We did start out with a little bit of pause, but it's not going to delay much gameplay at all. Uh, Triple C, Triple A eats himself a Tango and then drops the ward on top of that tree spot. Not sure if that's next level plays or it's just going to give away that he has a ward somewhere around there. Um, I don't know, usually not something you see. Very curious that he do so. Uh, but in the end... Let's see if the Scarlet Mage and the Venomancer are going to spot that one out. Uh, they do ping it out. The Venomancer sees the tree has been eaten. Um, I'm going to presume that they'll drop a Sentry Ward somewhere around this region to see where his Observer Ward is. I'm not sure why else you would break that tree. I don't know. It's being pinged by the Centaur. I'm, I'm not sure. Very curious. Uh, but for now, both supports are just kind of going to chill as the level 1 or 0 minute rune. I should say. It's going to spawn top. It's going to be Haste for Ball. And a Hasted Shadow Shaman is definitely a good... Um, Hero to pick up that l l first blood if you have enough damage in the lane to do so. Up against the Brewmaster and Darkseer, it's unlikely that they'll be able to get the kill, but at the very least, they'll be able to zone out the Darkseer at the very start of this game. So, I mean, it's it's a solid choice for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is quite possibly one of the worst lanes that a Centaur could be in. To start us off with a, a Venomancer as well as a Skyrath Mage, great here as it's zoning out a Centaur. And on the dire side, Centaur does not have a backup plan. He does have uh, the two sets of Tangles, although already using one. With the extra Howl damage, we'll be able to trade a little bit better. Um, but still, Centaur is going to have to eat through all of those two sets of Tangos and the Salve. I don't think that's overkill by any means, and 
If you could, you'd buy a secondary salve, because the uh, harass coming out from these supports is actually ridiculous. Uh, once Venomancer gets his level 2, you'll have the Poison Sting to deal with, as well as the Venomous Gale to slow you down. And before level 6, Centaur doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with that. Um, yeah, I'd expect one of the offlaners to give up the first blood, whether that's uh, oof, playing on the Darks here, or that is uh, Triple C, Triple A on the Centaur, where we'll have to see. But I think... Yeah, they're just going to be playing very defensively. Darkseer might eventually back off into the jungle, has Iron Shell, and can spam that out a little bit. Has managed to find himself about a half a level of experience, but not much more than that. Um, but Centaur has managed to find himself to level 2, so Darkseer just playing very defensively, and I think that Haste Rune on the Shadow Shrum definitely played a bit of a role there. The mid matchup, I touched on it a little bit in the draft to start us off. Um, the Brewmaster should have a little bit of an edge. I don't like that he's skipping Drunken Haze. I think spamming that out's uh, more useful than the Thunderclap because early on, Invoker only has his right clicks in order to um, get CS. And with that mischance, it's very hard to uh, deal up against. Centaur completely zoned by these supports, and he's going to start trading with the Skyrath Mage. I'm not sure about this choice. Um, and also, I think getting the double edge points possibly a little bit of a mistake on Triple C, Triple A. I think Return would help you a lot more in this lane. But then again, a lot of the harass is also just coming out from the uh, Arcane Bolt. They will start off with a Concussive Shot. He has been slowed down by the uh, Poison Sting as well on that Venomous Ward. And actually does opt to uh, not go for the Gale as this lane is pushing in. They have three range creeps, but so they'll be mopped up fairly quickly. And Centaur will uh, thank the Venomancer for dropping those wards in the very end as he gets a little bit more of the uh, gold and a couple of CS as well fit away. Can't do nothing about dire structures. Right yeah, now. dire are going to fortify the structures as this push is not going to let up coming out from bananas and pajamas. Triple C Triple A has like no counter push that he can do and um, can't really get the creep aggro off very effectively. And the Venomaster words are just being very annoying. Remaster finds himself a regeneration rune in mid, which will just help him sit in lane a little bit longer. Uh, the CS is fairly even 13 4 compared to 13 and 3 of the invoker. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of this uh, build, getting the two points in a Drunken Ball. I think the value point in Drunken Haze is, is definitely worth it. Whether you level it up any more than that is personal choice. I think the one point is plenty um, for the mischance in lane. and Then you can back off and max up your clap as well as your um, uh, critical hit chance. But I, I really do think, especially against heroes that rely on their right clicks to CS, um, that, yeah, that, that, that would be the better build option for him. Darkseer still not having the greatest of times and is actually doing very poorly. Only a level 2 with 2 CS compared to the Centaur's 5 and level 4. I'm actually baffled that this Darkseer is so under farmed and so under leveled. And Darkseer as a hero really does need those levels to get online, especially with these supports going away. He needs to play more aggressively up against the Lycanthrope. He's just letting the Iron Shell do the work for him. He's being zoned by a solo Lycan. This should not happen. If anything, the Darkseer should be doing uh, the harassing on the uh, Lycan throw with these sports, rotating down bottom. Ball as well as Silva. So looking for a potential kill down here as Ball drops the Ether Shock farm with me. He's going to get caught by the Shackles. Will he be able to get in range? They follow up the Fissure. A nice block Sunstrike. Oh, it's going to clip on him. And first blood is given away the Invoker with the double edge securing the kill onto the Venomancer. We have an invised up Skyrath Mage, but he might be feeding away a kill as well. I don't think he can go very aggressively on Triple C, Triple A. With the Venomancer slow, he will be able to zone him out, but he'll be able to back off and salve up as well. So in the end, two kills going the way of Yules and not the start. The you want to be giving them. That's going to give Zella a pretty large advantage in the lane. Uh, with that first blood extra gold, he's going to have his completed phase boots. Um, so a lot of extra damage going to come out as Centaur gets a kill on the Skyrath Mage with that double edge. He might be giving up his life for this and he will with the Lucent Beam coming out from the Luna. So definitely not worth it, I would say, uh, giving a kill to the enemy carry for one kill on the support in um, some sort of awkward trialing scenario as the supports have kind of managed to uh, sit their way down here. Um, but yeah, Invoker probably going to back off for the Midas with that Gloves of Haste after the Phase Boots. Just wants the extra damage uh, so he can stay in lane up against the Brewmaster. Um, but if uh, Brewmaster was liberally spamming that Drunken Haze, the Phase Boots would be a lot less effective. And, well, that's water on their bridge as of now. So, let's see 
Invoker's Midas timing isn't going to be the fastest, but after going for the phase boots, it's going to be definitely admirable. He actually feeds away the Forge Spirit, I thought that would live, but in the end, Burmaster got an extra crit. Now that supports have rotated off Darkseer, has managed to pick up a little bit of steam in the bottom lane, almost hitting level 5 war bottom. They stun up farm with me. The follow-up sense not going to be there in Sense Track. Way off the mark coming up from the Invoker. Um, yeah, they, they needed the shackles or something else to lock them in place. I think the creeps were actually blocking up the center order, so he couldn't get in range for that. Um, unfortunate that they couldn't get the stomp and that kill there. Yep, so back into this game we go as regeneration room picked up by the smoked up earth checker. Eh, that is going to be spotted out by Ward, so they should have something's going on, but oh, they're going aggressively with the central ultimate. They might be able to catch out all three. They stomp onto two with the Fisher on two as well. Sunstrike onto the Luna. Oh no, the Luna is actually going to be uh, voided the, uh, that Sunstrike. Will they have enough damage to get her? I don't think so. And the backline center gets the two supports at the very least. So one to five is our kill score. I thought they'd be able to pick off the kill on Farm with me, but Farm with me sticking around here. Uh, not sure about this choice. So Lucent Beam will keep Centaur Warner at arm's length, but a Fissure could come out the Earthshaker at any time, and honestly, I think the Earthshaker could probably go for this, like... Yeah, just walk up a little further and make sure that Farm With Me does not farm. There's no reason to let him hit a couple more creeps. Um, yeah, this is about the maximum range that Farm With Me can stand, and if Earthshaker would just position himself, like, maybe over here... Oh, go for the Fissure, it lands on Farm With Me, they don't have the follow-up and won't be able to get the stun, and now with the Lucent Beam as well as the Gale landing on Triple C, Triple A, he's trying to TP out, no way to cancel it, will they have enough damage to get it, and he will survive inside the enemy base. The Gale as well as the uh, Poison Sting will not take again. In fact, uh, Gale not doing any damage, as that is only level 1, but still... <clears throat> Close call as Lycanthrope picks himself up the Vladimir's offering. So now the Darkseer's position in lane to put a little bit of pressure onto Eunus is going to be pretty much negated. As with that Vladimir's offering, he can sustain through the uh, Ion Shell Harass a lot more, and with the Wolves, can munch through it as well. So the Ion Shell Creep is really not going to be there. And while Darkseer, although he's managed to pick up a little bit, he has his level 6 finally. Well, not finally. He has a level 6 at a decent time run off lane. Dark Series. So he's caught up admirably going for the mechanism for his team. He has the buckler recipe and whatnot sending to himself on the courier. Um, yeah. Looks like bottom is going to continue to be the place where there's some action. The tower is going to be denied. Up by the Shadow Shaman as well as the Centaur Warner. They're just kind of waiting, possibly trying to bait it in. But in the end, Shadow Shaman gets a deny. Simultaneously, Brewmaster picks up his Blink Dagger at a very... A uh, good time after going for that bottle as well as the boots. We'll have that at 8 minutes, so let's see if Roy Mustang will be able to do anything with this. Uh, he does have the ultimate available, and now the support backup. They need to get a kill on this Invoker, but the other supports are already backing up. Uh, Invo with a Fissure as well as the follow-up shackles if they dive him under tower. And with the Haste it looks like Invoker is going to be just fine and dandy. Centaur Ultimate is also available, so a very low probability kill, but they're wrapping around for it nonetheless. As the smoke is going to dissipate, Earthshaker might be the cost of this rotation as he walks straight into both of them, gets a Fissure onto two. There's no follow-up, however, for this, and the Arcane Bolts as well as the Slows are going to be annoying for him. Ball is coming through. If he gets the shackles off, they should be able to get the Sunstrike landed up, but they won't even need it. Now they should be able to chase down Shiva. They have another Fissure. Not enough mana, however, for it with the Sunstrike. Oh, it's going to land the Cold Snap onto Shiva. They have a Fissure and jams it in. The Earthshaker gets a nice kill onto the Venomancer. So these supports have died a collective of six times coming out. Yeah, 0, 3, and 1 on both of them. So the Bananas and Pajama supports just not having a good game. Feeding away a lot of gold. And yeah, now Eunice... He has his power trades as well as Vitamin's offering. So the pushing power coming from the Slycanthrope is already starting to come online. I would think the Bananas and Pajamas had to get um, an early advantage in order to really fight up against the uh, European Love Story lineup, and they're not going to be able to get that. And, well, Darkseer might be able to get his mechanism with the supports rotating off the lane, but if they kill him a couple more times, he's still not going to have the best farm, and the tower's just going to continuously take him damage. He'll pull off the aggro, but now a Serpent Ward's committed. They're a little bit bogged as far as the direction they're facing, but either way, these Serpent Ward cosmetics look cool. There's the last hit, gives the way of the Lycan, and well on his way towards the Necronomicon as well. So, both of these, um, or one tower apiece coming up from both teams in the off lane. However, this one was denied, so the gold advantage is going to be vastly in the favor of Yules to start us off, or at least I would hope so, especially if you look at the supports farm. The Earthshaker is at 1,600 net worth and going to be working towards his Blink Dagger, presumably next, um, I think that's the better choice than Arcane's. Well, Scarlet Mage is going to be fissured up, denies the Illusion Rune, but it looks like it's going to be at the cost of his own life as he's shackled up Sunstrike, not even necessary, as the Wolves just munch through him, and now... 
Into the Roshan Pit they go. He's not going to be going for either of those choices as he picks up a Helm of the Dominator, presumably towards an Armlet. Now, Armlet Lycan is something that's been tried several times before. It gives him a lot more damage when chasing down these heroes. Uh, Venomancer, Darkseer, and Scythe Mage are going to be fairly easy targets for him to destroy when he has the uh, Armlet toggled on as well as the Shapeshift to chase them down. So I think this Roshan's going to go through. I'm not a huge fan of this Armlet choice. I think just getting Necronomicon uh, to pair with Zella's Necro is... Uh, would have been the more conventional and possibly better uh, item choice, but this armlet, it might pay off. We'll have to see how it's going to pan out for them in a couple more seconds. Arcane Boots picked up by the Urshik with that extra gold, so his Blink Dagger is going to be delayed by quite some time. Uh, probably not going to see that sub 20 minutes. It's probably going to be about then, uh, depending on how many more towers they can get down. And bottom, they jump onto the center. Center blown up. Uh, not a lot to talk about. There's four heroes around the center. You can't do anything. He had the center ultimate, and actually, I believe he deployed it for that, uh, so wasn't able to make it out to safety. Unfortunately, for. European love story, but at least the Centaur is the only one that's died on their team with a KDA of 322. So, the push is going to commence a little bit from Bananas in Pajamas, but these other lanes are going to be the cost of it if they try to commit too hard for this. Shiva will drop some wards potentially, but the Fissures are already going to delay the push, and Tier 2 Tower is going to take some damage from the... Uh, Lycanthrope. The Iron Shield does nothing to these Lycan Wolves anymore as they are level 4, so with that extra region, and actually, Brewmaster are going to be killed in the mid line to his Sunstrike coming out from the Invoker. Surfboard's going to take the tier 1 tower in mid. I think that um, Glyph is really only going to delay the inevitable. Uh, possible deny coming out from the Lua, but not a chance. Invoker gets the last hit. And it will be a Lycanthrope. Um, armlet that he has completed at 12 minutes in to go along with his Vlads and Aegis. This is pretty scary to be honest, like, Eunice could probably uh, chase down the Darks here. He has mana for one Surge, um, but yeah, just harass him down a little bit and then he can uh, run through the level 2 Surge duration, which is 4.5. Uh, but Tier 2 Tower is going to take some decent damage. He's probably going to be forced back as the Scythe Mage is coming through, but very unlikely that they'll be able to get this kill and Lycanthrop will be just fine. So for now, just kind of uh, chilling the game, waiting for uh, Yules to make themselves known. I'm not sure if I've done this before, and I haven't, as we look at the gold graph. For the first time in this game, it is going to be about a 7,500 gold lead for Yules, as well as about a 6,000 experience lead for them. They pick up the Blink Dagger on the Centaur Warner, and they have the majority of the tools that they need to really start mowing down these towers and really taking a huge and unsurmountable advantage in this game. Venomancer looks like a pretty tasty snack for the Centaur, as well as Sunstrike combo, and they also have the Fissure available. It is pretty scary jumping into Shiva, as they might... Um, presume that he has some backup, but they could find the bigger prize in the form of farm with me if they had word vision there as well. So Venomancer, walking up towards the lane, it looks like Centaur might just deploy the ultimate at run at any moment. Not sure how this is going to break down for them. Here we go, blink in the mid, Shiva, he's just standing still, and now, oh my goodness, is he AFK or something? The double edge as well as the Sunstrike will be enough, and Zella's going to get that kill. Roy Mustang has his ultimate, not going to deploy the Earthshaker's taking a lot of magical damage with that silence deployed onto him as well. I think he's going to be okay not take down, and in the and it's going to be a one for none trade as Yules get another one onto the board. Shadow Shaman gets the tier two tower, um, or tier one tower in the meantime in the bottom lane, securing all of those while the tier two tower up in top takes substantial damage from the Lycanthrope just beating away at it. Yeah, I don't know, slowly but surely, it looks like Yules are just going to choke out Bananas and Pajamas. There's very little that they can do at this point. They have a Luna that's not going to have a game impact for quite some time. She went for the Helm of the Dominator, but if she stacks the Ancients, the Lycanthrope can just take those away from her with the Armlet as well as uh, his Wolves. He can destroy those fairly quickly, and she'll be forced to go into this BKB next, but BKB's not really going to help you. In the mid lane, they will get a kill on the Invoker with the Brewmaster split, but he's not going to be able to pursue anybody else. He windwalks with the Storm Panda. I would have liked to see him maybe just go in and throw one else in the air. I mean, if you're just going to let it back off, you might as well throw the Fire and the Wind Panda uh, to the dogs and just make as much damage or havoc happen as you can. But still getting a kill on the Invoker, a uh, boon for uh, Bananas and Pajamas, but it just doesn't feel like it's enough. Yeah, we do have a mechanism online for the Darks here. No mechanism in sight uh, for the Dire team. Really, if they wanted a mech, they'd have to get it on their Shadow Shaman Center or their Invoker. Neither, or none of them, rather, are very likely candidates. TP canceled. Coming out from Eunice, the Luna just making herself a bit of a nuisance. Uh, but in the end, the Tier 2 Tower is going to fall to Lycanthrope. He gets the last hit on that, and he's probably going to just go back off for a 
Necronomicon. At this point, I don't see why not. He already has the physical damage coming out from the armlet, and, well, with the amount of towers as well as farm that he's been allowed, seeing at the top of the CS board, as well as getting the last hit on, I believe, two towers, and just getting the gold from the R2 and Roshan, I think he could afford to go back for it, and... Yeah, Yule's... Even if they took this light up against the Luna, I don't think they'd be that much in trouble. I think they have tools that they can use to deal with the Luna. If they get the jump on her before she gets the BKB with maybe like a blank hex coming out from the Shadow Shum follow-up stomp uh, from the Centaur, she just falls too quickly from the physical damage that they have. And Lycanthrope, although we don't usually see him as a late-game carry, he can still pack a punch if he's able to get those bigger ticket items up. MKB, maybe Abyssal Blade up against the Luna. Um, and then also being very tanky if he picks up something along the lines of Heart of Trask. Yeah. Mid lane going to be the next push coming out from European love stories. They start plinking away at these smaller creeps and also take the Ancients away from the Luna. Yeah, Eunice with the uh, armor can just munch away through these bigger creeps and make some more economic damage happening. I'd like to see him possibly leave one of the creeps in there, but eventually he won't. Serpent Ward's committed to the mid tier two, and I don't think there's a lot that they can do. They'll try to clean up some of these Serpent Wards, but with the Lycan munching away at the tower as well, with that armor activated on Eunice, there's very little that they need to worry about. Tier 2 tower going to fall and no trade in sight on any of the other sides of the map. Venomancer has some wards down bottom, that's about it. Tier 1 tower going to take some damage, but it's going to be negligible and they're still waiting around. If somebody tries to farm up, they could be in a lot of trouble as Triple C, Triple A. He's there with a the blink dagger and there with a vengeance as Shiva might be the target. Mm, I don't know, the Luna looking juicy. Where's the blink centaur? If something misses, and that should be about it. They blink in with Roy Mustang. They'll have to use the central ultimate to disengage, as well as a nice fissure. So a clean disengage coming up from Yules. I don't think anybody will die for it. Uh, but in the end, still unfortunate that Hoofstomp had to miss. Uh, only a, just a couple of units away. Well, Necronomicon 3 on the Invoker, and Lycanthrope instead going to prove me wrong and go straight for what looks like a heart, uh, possibly even a Satanic. I don't think he'll go for a Satanic. I think this is just hard to tank up up against Bananas and Pajamas, because honestly, they just don't have a lot of damage. It is going to make his illusion in the Darkseer wall do more, um, if he does get caught, but still, mm, not the biggest deal. Roy Mustang does have one point up in the Drunken Haze now, which will be annoying for the uh, Lycanthrope to deal with. I probably would have liked him, um, the Lycan rather, building a BKB instead of this Reaver, or just an Necronomicon for the extra push. Um, he won't go for anything, and Shiva needs to be careful. I think he could actually just run at him in wolf form, not wanting to risk it. He does have the Aegis that's going to expire pretty soon, or rather, he's already uh, lost the Aegis. But yeah, I don't know. He can, he can just dive in Shiva. He's going to pop the wolf for him and now start munching away. He gets the Venomancer Gale onto him, but all he needs is one more sweep. Is, or, yeah, there you go. Lycanthor gets a kill. No TP is coming back to punch. That is in mid lane. We have a huge initiation as the Deafening Blast drops by the Invoker as well as the wall. All these illusions are doing a decent amount, but the Luna is going to die as well as the Venomancer. Invoker will also fall as Roy Mustang comes back to himself, but now the Stomp goes on to XN Grey. Mm, I don't know if they lose yet another in the form of the Skyrath Mage. A fairly even exchange all around the map, but now the Lycanthor, he's in their base. Buyback forced out by the Luna, and now the Glyph as well. Eunice has done his job, and this is the threat of playing up against the Lycanthor. Even if you trade even in the fight, you're going to lose your structures in mid. They jump straight onto the Darkseer. Darkseer wrecked, and now Roy Mustang not looking too healthy either. I don't know. For now, he's just fighting up against these summons. If he kills the melee Necronomicon, he's going to be in a heap of trouble. Lucent beams are on the way to the center. He might just go for the war stop. I think he's going to die one way or another. Oh, the neutral from the Helm of the Dawn here gets the stomp off to secure that guild. They would have gotten him anyway. Um, yep, there you go. <laughs> Luna deciding to play Chen instead of stacking up her Ancients, going to use that a little bit more aggressively, which I like the choice. I don't think uh, stacking up your Ancients with that is going to be good. As aforementioned, the Lycanthrope could probably just farm those up. Well, for now, just waiting on the next round of items for Yules in order to uh, push in. They just have that casual Reaver for now on the Yunus. Um, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of this, but eventually uh, that should be a Heart of Tresk, and maybe once they have that, they'll be more inclined to push in. It gives him a decent amount of damage to work with, um, I believe, 40 uh, base damage when it comes to the Heart of Tresk. Um, but now they do have an Aghanim Scepter online for the Brewmaster, so he's going to have even more Drunken Haze to start spamming out to make sure that the Lycan isn't able to get off his damage from those physical right clicks, uh, especially on the squishier heroes like the Skyrath Mage and the Venomance. So Mischance is going to be very important. Uh, for them to stay alive. But bottom lane, Tier 2 Tower is pretty much as good as dead. The Lycan is already at the front door, has his wolves, has his armlet toggled on, and he will finish up this heart. If he gets the last hit, he's almost going to have it just a couple more creeps away. Blink Tiger online at the prescribed time of 20 minutes for the Earthshaker. 
And, well, it's almost go time. I think you wait for the uh, Lycanthrope to have his heart. Um, but no, they're not going to wait. They summon all of their units. And now this tower is pretty much just going to melt. They drop the Super Wars as well. Roy Mustang jumps in the middle of the parade, but gets hexed up. And now they might even be able to kill him before he gets his ultimate off. There goes the split in the back lines. It's Darks here. Wall catches a lot of heroes, but the Venomancer is going to be the first one to fall units. It's pretty much caught in place and can't do much. You know, Armor Toggle coming out with all of the dot damage as well as the Lucid Babe going to kill on the Sky as Mage. They throw the center up in the air. He's not looking like he's in a great position. Will he be able to blink out to safety? Will he be able to blink north before he gets cancelled and Volker dies to Darkseer as well and well I think you should have waited Darkseer also caught in a bit of a sticky situation but yeah without a buyback on the Invoker into Sunstrike they wouldn't have been able to do that yeah I I would have liked to see them wait for the Earthshaker with the Blink Dagger he wasn't there anywhere in that team fight and they kind of needed it like really bad they got a nice Darkseer wall inside of Bananas and Pajamas and turned that into a pretty big team fight win. Had they had the heart on the Lycan as well as the Earthshaker Blink, that could have been a completely different fight. Earthshaker jams it in on the Skyrath Mage with the Blink forward as well as the center Warner picking up that kill. Um, yeah, just a nice little pickoff after the fact, but still losing your Skyrath Mage Lycanthrope as well as Invoker. Not a great thing. Yeah, that push wasn't the uh, best executed by uh, European Love Story, but I still think they're going to be fine. They'll get those next round of items up. Uh, now, and they'll also get a four staff onto the invokers, so going to be able to do, uh, kite them around a little bit more, even though he's not going to be, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the Shadow Shaman also with that Blink Dagger not going to be rushing towards the Aghanim Scepter this game. A lot of great initiation. It came in uh, handy up against the Brewmaster, but they weren't able to focus him down before he got the split off. And while they're grouping up trying to kill the Brew, uh, they ended up just getting vacuumed into the wall. I guess I've probably talked plenty about that team fight. Roshan's going to be the next target for European Love Story to go for. Uh, it's looking pretty juicy for them to take at the moment. As it is up, they have uh, no Serpent Wards for another one second, and now it's go time. They could drop the Serpent Wards if they need to, or they could just save them and go for Roshan. But it looks like Bananas and Pajamas know this is going on, and we're looking for the defenses. Everybody's just kind of standing off. The D Wards come out. The Venomancer Ward's going to know if they go for Roshan, but here's your Dire Advantage going to come in uh, as they'll be able to farm themselves up a nice little Ancient Stack in the meantime, or maybe they just go straight into the Roshan pit. The vision has been denied. The Venomancer Ward going to catch out the Forge Spirit, but he's already in the Roshan pit in the meantime. Yeah, everybody in Bananas and is just kind of chilling as they get vision inside the Roshan pit. Not sure why he's changing target. If you're going to go for Roche, go for Roche. Now Luna with the BKB. She might be jumping into the pit, blinking, but he's going to be counter shaded on by Triple C, Triple A. He's going to eat the double edges wall. Fish is going to block a lot of his team inside the rest of the pit. They're going to lose the Earthshaker. The stars off. After a nice echo slam, they get three kills on the enemy team. BKB, Luna with the Iron Shell on top of her, trying to chase down the Invoker. Lycanthrope is also returning in kind with the Deafening Blast coming off immediately after the BKB funds down with the Lucid Beat. will be able to get that kill, but Eunice, he's getting by by his own creeps. The micro's not there, and Luna's going to survive. Necronomicon Warrior just needs a little bit more right click. He's not going to get the range. There's the range for the extra movement speed. They get the illusion rune from with me, still trying to run away. Will she be able to make it out with triple C, triple A's? Blink dagger coming up a cooldown. Blink. Or Aethershot going to get the kill on the Luna, but Roy Mustang, he wants Blood Ball, looking like a tasty target. Where was this in the last fight? I'm not sure what happened to the Brewmaster. Uh, well, he's going to throw up the Centaur in there after getting the Shadow Shaman kill, but in the meantime, Lycanthrope soloing up Roshan with those Wolves, as well as a newly completed Hyperstone in his inventory. So, at the end of the day, a uh, costly fight for both teams, but still, European Love Story going to get the better half of that exchange. As they didn't lose their main carry and ended up securing themselves to Roshan, as well as an Aegis for the next team fight. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and take a look at these graphs, and yeah, although a little bit of a um, comeback was coming out from Bananas and Pajamas to start, before that fight afterwards, it's just going to start dipping down back towards 1,200 gold lead for Yules to work with, and mostly that's just the amount of map control they've been able to seize this game. Experience, not very impressive in the lead, but still nearing that 7,500 experience advantage. Scarth Mage is in a bit of a sticky situation here. Blink forward, Hoofstomp not going to come out. Double Edge also going to miss, and now Sunstrike off the mark. So Scarth Mage thanks his lucky stars. Fissure going to be off the mark. Many spells were missed that day, as the Scarth Mage is just going to be fine. Yeah, that that's something you don't see every day. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but in the end, Venomancer outside of the... Um, Basically, will be forced to back off as Lucent Beam thrown out to the Lycanthrope, but with 3000 HP and a Heart of Trask, he doesn't really care. Uh, he can almost have that, um, he can pretty much just have that armlet toggled on the entire time when he's pushing in. Uh, as long as he's not taking hero damage, she could probably just take this tower while the corpses are still there on the ground, back to her protection is not there. So T3 tower, easy damage, and, well, buyback from the Shadow Shaman. I'm not sure if that was entirely necessary, but he wants to get back to his team ASAP so he can be there 
for the actual high ground push that I think is coming sooner rather than later out of European love story. Yeah, or Shaker, they're waiting for his Echo Slam still five seconds before he'll have that back online. And well, once they have that, they can jump very liberally into Bananas and Pajamas. Let's see how this team fight is going to break out or when it is as Triple Z and Triple A as well. As Silvos are waiting in wake, they're going to find the Luna with the Fissure. No follow-up for that, however. Not sure why they didn't jump. I think that's a decent opportunity to go for at the very least. I mean, you might lose some heroes, but without the uh, Luna, they'll be in a lot of trouble. She has the BKB, but she was already stunned. They could have followed that up with the uh, Hoof Stomp Double Edge if they really want to. And I think with the Lycanthrope also wailing on her, well, jump in. It's first going to come out from Roy. Mustang, they get the silence on the like, and no ultimate coming out just yet as they pretty much all jump in. Triple C, Triple A, they drop the Serpent Wards on the ground as Venomancer is the first one to fall. Pipe has been deployed on the radiant side as the Sky of the Mage ultimate just rips to shreds the poor Shadow Sean. Buyback from the Venomancer who wants to get in this fight, and they're just munching through. Brewmaster Minions is not going to be missed time, but he catches out the Dark Sarah, and he'll be the first one to die. Deftering Blast Meteor combo going to be off the mark as Farm with me is being focused down by Eunice, and Eunice just munches through him, and now the Venomancer looks like he's going to die back. Buyback from the Dark Sarah trying to get into this fight, and it looks like he might also die. No MKB on the Lycan so he's going to be forced back but tb and from farm with me and farm with me they get a nice vacuum but the echo slam comes out from the earth shaker they're going to be able to catch out all three of these heroes the nice visual will catch out three as well now piff looks like he's going to be first one to fall so this is fairly low and lycanthrope coming back from the ages but the melee barracks is going to be the prize and gg called out in the end moral of the story don't give away lycanthrope shadow sean first pick i think it's just too risky to do so by no means did european love story play a perfect game but it was enough to take the win here in game one that's uh, the last couple of series that I've been playing, especially with the European teams, have ended up um, in one once. We're in the second game. The uh, other team was able to make a big comeback. So we will see if Bananas and Pajamas are going to be able to do that here at game two coming up shortly. The lobby will be up um, momentarily as we um, just take a minute to sign off for this game at the very least. Um, I'm Grandis V. I've been your caster here on Hefla TV 2. You can follow us on Hefla TV 2 if you want to support us. That's a great way of doing so. The VODs will be uploaded to youtube.com slash So that's it for just a split second. Don't go anywhere. It's Game 2 coming up shortly. See you soon.